On behalf of the Koda and Tristany and their families, I would like to welcome all of you this afternoon to this special occasion, the marriage ceremony, beginning a life of journey between these two. We trust that your time here with us will be well spent and that this will be a memorable day for all. Family and friends, we are gathered together here in the presence of God and this congregation to join together Dakota and Tristany in marriage, which is an honorable estate instituted by God and signifying to us the mystical union that is between Christ and his church, and therefore is not to be entered into unadvisedly or lightly, but reverently, discreetly, advisedly, soberly, and in the fear of God, considering the causes for which marriage was ordained. First, it was ordained for the procreation of children to be brought up in the fear and nurture of the Lord and to the praise of his holy name. Secondly, it was ordained for a remedy against immorality and to keep themselves undefiled members of Christ's body. Thirdly, it was ordained for the mutual society help and comfort that one ought to have of the other, both in prosperity and adversity. Into this holy estate, these two persons present come now to be joined. 
Who gives this woman to be married to this man? Her mother and I. Please remain standing for prayer. Father, we come before you in your presence. Father, we glorify you today because you are Lord of Lord and King of Kings. Father, we ask your blessing upon this marriage between Tristan and Rebecca. Father, we ask that you would glorify yourself in their life. Lord, that they would make you the most important thing. That their eyes and their goal would always be you and your kingdom. Father, may you receive the glory. Um, in Jesus' name, amen. Please have your seat. I'm reading to you from the book of Genesis chapter 2, verse 18 to 24. Then the Lord said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make him a helper suitable for him. Out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the sky and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called the living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all the cattle and to the birds of the sky and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helper suitable for him. So the Lord God caused the deep sleep to fall upon the man, and he slept. Then he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh at that place. The Lord God fashioned into a woman the rib which he had taken from the man and brought her to the man. The man said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of men. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. So for the next few minutes, I did say at the rehearsal, I would speak for at least three and a half hours, but after consideration last night, I decided to lessen the time. <laughs> A little boy sat through a Sunday school class and learned about the time Jesus went to a wedding and turned water into wine. His father asked, And what did you learn from the story? The boy thought for a moment and answered, If you are having a wedding, make sure Jesus is there. <laughs> That's good advice for all of us. Because Jesus is the foundation on which all Christian marriages are built. But he cannot be that foundation if you do not understand marriage from a biblical perspective. And so Genesis chapter 2 verse 18 to 24 outlines for us a biblical understanding of this great institution called marriage. Let's begin with verse 18. Then the Lord God said it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make him a helper suitable for him. Verse 18 clearly shows us the indisputable fact that God instituted marriage. It was God's idea. It was God who saw that man was lonely. Everything was good for a man. God said it was not good for him to be alone. It is interesting to note that although this sinless man was living in a perfect environment and in fellowship with God, Yet God said it was not good for him to be alone. You see, God instituted marriage before sin entered the world. It is said there is no such thing as a bad marriage, only bad participants. You see, marriage is not the problem. Marriage is good. The people in the marriage can be the problem. Look at verses 19 to 20. There are two important lessons we can learn from these verses. God gave Adam a responsibility before he gave him a wife. All the beasts of the field and all the birds of the air were brought to Adam to be named. The quarter you may recall when you first visited Southeastern, 
and uh, you reminded me I was the one who gave you your talk, but you would recall that at that time and many times after that when I, I came to do Bible study in your dorm, you may recall I would say to the young guys, and I say to all the young guys here today who are not yet married, name the animals. And everybody would look at me as, what in the world does that mean? And it simply means, do the job that God has given you to do, and leave the truth into God. God gave Adam a job, name the animals. And while Adam was busy doing his job, God brought to him his wife. 